Anything that a man can do that a woman can't do, the basis for that is in misogyny. And as I always say, misogyny is just racism's sexier cousin. She is dark as a sea and it light and beautiful and bright as the sun. The salt of the earth, fire burning and water dripping. How could be accusing goddess of magic? She is timeless. The pillow that doesn't need a plug. She is the wildest woman. And let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman. Is God. Let me say it again. The black woman is God. to my spot room 303 if you are new here welcome to the crew here and if you're a returnee well you already know what to do if you like this video well then like this video let the comments reveal how you really feel and if you're feeling a vibe well go ahead and subscribe and before you blink share this link okay okay you like it if you're new here then we got a thing that we do here and that's called the roll class is now in session so i need all of my hoteps my polygamists and my black misogynists to the front of the class for a read aloud so on the night when i get this camera acting like it's got some sense and I got this microphone sounding like hot butter on some yeast rolls. I'm not going to be able to finish this episode. I'm going to have to come back because it's the middle of the motherfucking night. And, and it's like you wait until now to be perfect. You wait until now for everything to be hidden, to be given what it's supposed to be given. And I got to go to bed. All right, all right. I have had a nap and now I'm back. So as a community builder extraordinaire, I keep hearing polygamy be put forward and advocated as the black woman's best hope for marriage. Many of the main reasons that I hear polygamy be thrown around in the black community as advantageous for black women is one, the disparity between the number of black women and black men. Just statistically, there are too many black women for the number of eligible black men and therefore polygamy. Two, somewhere someone got a biblical basis for polygamy. And three, the sexual incontinence of black men makes it where you're going to be cheated on anyway. You might as well be open to a polygamous relationship. Okay, first of all, let's just go ahead and put it out on the table for real. Y'all ain't really trying to get married. Like, let's, let's just be real about that, okay? Marriage isn't even really the goal for most of these sexual relationships that we're having. If that was the case, we wouldn't have so many single mothers. Now, while I gave you the main three reasons I hear people promoting this, I'm going to give you four reasons why I call. 
So one, I hear a lot of people saying that polygamy is going to create a lot more economic stability, but I can't see where they're getting those numbers from. In most sectors, in many areas, Black women outperform Black men economically. Now, on a national level, Black men do make more than Black women due to the pay gap. However, the pay gap on a national level between other races ranges between 22 to 28 percent, whereas between Black men and Black women, it's only 10 percent. So black women are closing the financial gap on their own men at a greater rate than women of other races are, are closing the gender pay gap on the men of their particular community. Black men and black women are making about 50% of what Asian men and women make and about 56% what white men and white women make per average. So we're already sitting at half a 238% wealth gap between ourselves and the highest performing racial group in this country, which is Asian men and Asian women. Now you got to ask yourself the question, how did Asian men and Asian women manage to overtake white men and white women for the highest earning racial group in this country when they are just like we are a minority? And that has happened because that is a group of people that value something that black people don't value, which is marriage, family, and morality. That's a very unrealistic expectation to expect a woman who's going half with you to now turn around and split you in half with another woman. This country does not back polygamous marriages. So now in the event that you do pass as a man, you're going to have one woman who your benefits are going to that's expected to look after however many other wives you have, because they are not going to get a death benefit. They're not going to be eligible as beneficiaries for life insurance. They're also not going to get health insurance. And I'm going to tell you something. If you have not seen the average cost of labor and delivery, you're looking at anywhere from 60,000 to a hundred thousand dollars just for one child. And I'm sorry if your second wife has to go on Medicaid in order to have your baby. This, we're not going to do all of that because as soon as that baby is born, social service is going to be looking for who the daddy is. This is going to spawn a whole lot of illegitimate children and a whole lot of burden for someone to take care of, which is probably, which is probably not going to fall back on that husband. I'm going to need you to make it make sense. All right, two. So for some odd reason, people think there's some biblical basis for polygamy. Now, if you're going to use a book to promote polygamy, I would not suggest using the Bible. There are only a handful of instances in the Bible where a man had more than one wife. And it's generally an illustration on why. God did not create that in the first place. God created one man, Adam, and created for that one man, one wife, Eve. And Jesus referenced this in the New Testament when he talked about what God's design for marriage was in the first place, which was one woman and one man. Now, I know a lot of people like to throw the New Testament out as being the authority on Christian marriage. Whenever people start wanting to talk about polygamy, they always only exclusively want to use the Old Testament. So if we are just looking at the Jewish Hebraic traditions for marriage, mostly all men had only one wife, even in the instant, even in the instance where those wives were infertile and they would have been allowed to take another wife. We see that many of the men in the Bible chose and preferred not to. Adam had one wife, Seth had one wife, Cain had one wife, Abraham had one wife. And even though he took Sarah's servant to have a child with, of course, then you have to deal with warring nations for the rest of time because of the issue that's created amongst the children of polygamous relationships, which we're going to get into that one in just a minute. Moses had one wife. Lot had one wife. Both Josephs had one wife. Noah had one wife. Boaz had one wife. Jesse had one wife, which is exactly why the whole story of King David is such gossip. Because see, David 
was an outside child. That's the reason why David was out in the field. That's the reason why David couldn't go into the army and be inscripted with his brothers because he was not what we call legitimate. I mean, it just adds layers to his story to know that. But anyway, I digress. Obed only had one wife. Hosea only had one wife. Zechariah only had one wife. The prophet Malachi talked about how a lot of the men were coming under judgment for forsaking the wife of their youth. So the God of the Bible has a very, very strict provision on what he recognizes as marriage. Lamech had more than one wife, but he was under the curse of Cain. He was a murderer and a murderous man, and he bragged about that. Elkanah had more than one wife. He had two wives, Penina and Hannah, and they were constantly arguing and fighting because Hannah couldn't have children and Penina could. Like it was constantly an issue. Hannah ended up giving birth to Samuel and Samuel was dedicated in the temple. It was a happy ending to the story. But my point is it was constantly war in that household. Jacob had more than one wife and you saw the whole situation with Rachel and Leah going back and forth and all of the children fighting and arguing about what initially was their mother's beef. Esau had more than one wife and Esau's wives made Rebecca just sick. She couldn't stand them. David had more than one wife and it was a woman that ended up causing him to almost fall from God's good grace. Simon had over 700 wives and God warned him time and time and time again that having all those wives were going to pull his heart away from being able to follow God. You know what's weird about biblical basis is that people use it to justify the stuff that they want to do, but they don't use it the way it's intended because God also says several times in the Old Testament Bible not to take foreign wives, not to get involved with Canaanites and Moabites. And I don't see anybody pulling all of that out when they start talking about interracial marriage. All these same men that want all these extra wives, I don't see them condemning men that have wives that are not of the same ethnicity and culture as them, even though the Bible is a strong proponent in telling you that that is going to alienate you from God. And if you think I'm joking about that, since you don't read the Bible, Google search Phineas and see what he's known for. Honestly, if you want a book that's going to condone and promote polygamy, the Quran would probably be a better book for that. But most people are not going to bring that book into a conversation about polygamy because, because Islam is very strict about what each wife has to be provided with in order for a polygamous marriage to be ordained. And you already know that that's not accessible for most black men because of the way that they complain about having to pay child support to outside homes. So next on that. So the whole purpose of marriage is supposed to be to solidify a commitment in your relationships, to legitimize the birth of any children that come out of that union, and to leave generational wealth, to have a clear line of succession and legacy. However, we as Black people are not leaving any generational wealth to be able to divide up amongst children of different relationships and marriages. Children that grow up in polygamous relationships will tell you how unstable their home life was. They can attest to the fact that polygamy did not secure the relationships that their parents had. And let's just be honest, women have options now. If you can't make a marriage and a relationship work with one woman, she is going to leave. The only thing that this particular arrangement is going to spread is dust. It's not creating the security that people want us to believe that it is. Men are dangling the carrot of marriage with the caveat of polygamy or open marriages. And all it's doing is destabilizing the institution. And if it's one thing that black people are not good at, it's building and maintaining institutions. And marriage is just another one of those. Marriage is a vehicle that is used to create economic wealth. And we're making a mockery out of this institution like we have so many other of our institutions. The word polygamy by definition refers to a person being able to take more than one spouse. 
People are out here throwing around polygyny like it's polygamy, but these are not the same. In countries where polygamy is legalized, it's legalized under the umbrella of marriage equality. And in countries like Senegal, a man can take as many as three wives, but a woman can take two husbands. And it's the same with anything. This is a slippery slope because honestly, if we start entertaining the idea of polygamy for men, we have to also likewise in turn recognize the right of polygamy for women as well. Otherwise, this isn't about polygamy. It's misogyny. And as I always say, misogyny is just racism's sexier cousin. So let's turn the argument on its ear. If you're asking me about polygamy, in some ways, I guess I support it because I do actually think that a marriage between a woman with more than one man is a functional way to fix some of the issues that we have in the black community. And I will make my point here. A lot of men complain about black women being masculine and not wanting to submit. However, you can't have it both ways. If you're asking a woman to split bills with you, go 50-50 with you, which in a lot of instances now, women are going more than 50% with their men. In a polygamous marriage where a woman gets more than one husband, well, y'all two can go 50-50 with each other. And then she can rest in her femininity, take care of the household, rear the children without having to go half with you economically. Like I can honestly say as a woman, if I can rest in my femininity and not have to worry about paying bills and taking care of myself, then I can see myself submitting in a situation like that. I could see me not having a problem with that. So how about y'all go 50-50 with each other and then you won't and then you won't even have to worry about a woman being in her masculinity at all. I can have life insurance, health benefits, y'all can split the cost of rearing the children. Like I see this as a win-win situation all the way around the board. And I already know what some men are going to say. Y'all are going to say, "Oh, but we need sex." all the time. We got to be able to have it all the time. Listen, I'm sorry. The odds are not in your favor on this one. Women can catch a whole lot more ping than y'all can sling and you can trust it. All I'm saying is that two can play that game if that's how you want to play it. What we really need in our community are strong solvent marriages. A lot of people say that culturally black people and black men are not given towards are not given towards monogamy, but that is just not true. 78% of men after leaving the plantations went and found their families and their children and their wives. And we have, we have as a people always been the most moral people, the people who had the strongest character. And I'm sorry you watching men like Nick Cannon and Future and Tristan Thomas just put kids everywhere. And it is spreading the wealth of black men into other communities. Tell me how being able to sling peen all over the place is really strengthening the fabric of our communities and our families. It is not. It's degradating everything that we have stood for. And I know that it's being put out like, oh, these are European standards and this, but the only people that are benefiting from the way that we're doing things right now is European people. While they're stacking and building and leaving wealth to the next generation, we're still sitting here arguing amongst these we're still sitting here arguing amongst each other about colorism and sexism. And I'm not going to do it with y'all no more. I'm going to go ahead and let you know that right now. Women are talking about divesting and all these different things because they don't want to deal with issues like this. If you are a good black man, find you a good black woman, marry her, make a family, 
build your wealth, get some multifamily properties, help someone else that's next to you. That is what Asians are doing. That is what Hispanics are doing. And that is why they are closing the wealth gap on the whites in this country at a faster rate than we have when we have already been out of slavery for several generations. I'm tired of the excuses. I'm tired of the broken promises. We have to begin to start with the smallest unit of community that we can control, which is who we have kids with, who we build our future with and I'm sorry slinging pain is is it's building up a lack of discipline within you that is going to make you unfit to be a husband and a father what's the point what is the point of leaving a trail of tears a trail of broken homes in your stead work on your broken psyche and then you can fix your community like for real these arguments about dumb stuff it's getting ridiculous. Like everybody who is trying to subjugate their own people is an enemy of the state. Period. Point blank. You cannot ask for submission from your women for a group of men who just want to be misogynist, who just want to take the arm of white supremacy and spread it right down into their own community and divide themselves against their own women. As a member of the black female delegation, we are not going to have it. We shall not have it. Take it or leave it. Because the only thing that's happening so far is y'all just tracking that little trail of tears into other communities of women now. It's time to fix it. Fix whatever's broken inside of you. And we will likewise do the work that we have always done to hold this community down. Now, when you're ready to pick up a hose and a shovel, let us know. In the meantime, I am your girl, Debbie and the Key, a word from your wildest woman. See you next week. Class is now dismissed.